Let's Tony Hancock in. Hancock's half hour. No peace for the wicked, Sid. What desperate criminal and horrendous crime will land on our plate this week? I don't know, Hancock. What desperate criminal and horrendous crime is landing on our plate this week? <laughs> right, let's have a look. It's a bloke called Mr Tweezer. Ha <laughs> ha. He's been charged with travelling 200 miles in lockdown. It's taken advantage, that is, Sid. <laughs> Just a boring car, was it? Not in something more interesting, like a tank or an helicopter. <laughs> Might have been in the car seat, but he wasn't in the driver's seat. So where was he then? Sitting on the roof rack. <laughs> As it happens, he wasn't. Mr. Tweezer was in the boot. Has he got very long arms then? <laughs> no, Mr. Tweezer isn't a contortionist, Sid. It was a lady, uh, an Amanda Holden driving. What? That bird on the television. She's on the telly, is she? Good grief. Never seen her before. Now, Amanda is a woman, Sid, but don't get any funny ideas, will you? <laughs> Don't worry, Hancock, she'll like me. Birds always do. <laughs> and I need a new girlfriend. You'll have to look elsewhere, mate, because she's not coming, so you can put your tongue away and stop dribbling. You're making a mess on the carpet. Good morning. Are you two Hancock's heroes? The first private police force. The real police sent me down here because they're too busy. I've got a complaint. A complaint, eh? What is it? Gout? Lumbago? Oh, you're good, you are. How did you know? Yes, as a matter of fact, but it's not that I've come about. But I'll tell you about my lumbago. It goes all down this side. It's like pins and needles. I have to take tablets, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Tweezer. We're Hancock's heroes, the first private police force and not the NHS. Just tell us about your lockdown crimes, matey. <laughs> It wasn't my fault. I wasn't the one driving. I can't drive on account of my lumbago. You see, I can't get insurance. Oh, very well, Mr. Tweezer, but you were a passenger in the car. Why didn't you get out? But I wasn't a passenger, was I? I was in the boot against my will. It was very uncomfortable. I got a dead leg. It went numb all down one side, the other side to the lumbago. I'm a bit of a mess, aren't I? <laughs> you can cut all that nonsense out, Mr. Tweezer. What actually were you doing in the boot? You were trying to kidnap Miss Olden, weren't you? How could I? I was stuck in the boot. I kept knocking on the partition, but she thought it was her exhaust, I ask you. I was the one who was kidnapped by Miss Holden. She wanted to have her evil way with me, I think. <laughs> Excuse Sergeant James, Mr. Tweezer. He has a rather suspicious nature and tends to see things in terms of black and white, or shall I say sex. So you were or weren't intent on grabbing Mrs. Olden's bits and bobs then? Not at all. I'm a married man. I love my wife, we great chums, but she's run off with another man at the moment. It won't last. It never does. <laughs> That doesn't convince me. Lots of married men might succumb to Amanda's charm. So why did you climb into Miss Holden's boot? I didn't do any climbing. We were in the pound shop car park when this car reversed into me and I fell backwards into the boot. Then a woman came along and chucked a whole lot of stuff onto me and shut the lid and drove off. I was dazed. <laughs> So, Mr. Tweezer, why didn't you call after her? Did you make any effort to get away? Well, you see, Amanda had purchased an auntie spotted dick steam pudding two-pack, and it landed in my mouth, and I couldn't speak. Shout or nothing. Well, anyway, my mother always told me I shouldn't speak with my mouth full, so I didn't. Come on, Mr. Tweezer. You don't expect us to believe that, do you? Why didn't you pull out the spotted dick? <laughs> I quite enjoyed it at first, it was very tasty, but then I found I couldn't move my arms to get rid of the dick. She's a lousy driver, swerving all over the place, and I started to get sick. I had to summon up all my willpower. So, why didn't Amanda Alden hear you getting sick? I suppose she must have thought it was the exhaust. I ask you, <laughs> Anyway, Amanda had bought 200 jars of coconut body butter and 400 packets of condoms, and they were on top of me, trapping my arms. I couldn't move to get rid of the spotted dick. 
You're making all this up, aren't you, Mr. Tweezer? Why on earth would Amanda buy 200 jars of coconut body butter and 400 packets of condom? How should I know? I went to a Catholic school. You'll have to ask her. I only went to the pound shop for a packet of wine gums and some oven gloves. Amanda's a bit of a girl, so I've heard. My wife is a bit of a girl. And she's gone again. Yes, so you said. But far from being a bit of a goer, Miss Holden was very upset, Mr Tweezer, as you can well imagine. I'm the one who should be upset. I don't know why she knocked me into the boot. I didn't want to be there. I don't like Cornwall. It smells of seaweed and ozone. Cornish people don't like me. I can't think why. You can't prove she knocked you over, can you? You claim she hit you and you toppled into the boot. She says you climbed in the back when she wasn't looking. Where's your evidence? It's your word against hers. It's a lie, I tell you. I'm an innocent man. My wife is standing by me. It's a pity she wasn't standing by you in the pound shop car park. Or oh, you would have had a witness, wouldn't you, Mr. Tweezer? Have you ever been locked in a boot before? No, I can't say I have. It can't be me then, can it? It's not as if I'm doing it all the time. <laughs> Not so fast, Mr. Tweezer. It says here that in 1989 you got locked in the East Jean public toilets. Did you not? That's a toilet. It's not a car boot. I had to cross my legs for 200 miles and I didn't spend a penny. What do you think of that? Well, if you don't mind, I'd rather not think about it at all. However, to continue, in 2002 you got locked in a sauna at the West Yule Gym with two young ladies. So you have got previous. As there is a certain suspicion, Mr Tweezer, that you are up to something slightly seedy and unsavoury, we'll have to go to court to separate the fact from the fiction. <laughs> Watch out, Sid. There he is. Judge see-through. Don't look at him. If he thinks it's us, he might try and make a run for it. Could <laughs> our uh, Mr. Terry Teaser come to the witness stand, please? His name is Mr. Tweezer, Your Honour, not Teaser. Well, could Mr. Tweezer come to the witness stand instead? Who was that speaking? It was me, Your Honour, ex-police inspector Hancock. I'm sorry I wasn't hiding. Why on earth would I do that? <laughs> Why are you here? I hope you're not connected with this case. Where is Tweezer? I'm over here. I'm a Tweezer, not a Teaser, Your Honour. Once you get to know me, you won't get me mixed up again. <laughs> yes, I'm sure I won't. But just answer the questions, will you, Mr Tweezer? So you are the one who took a joyride in a Miss Amanda Holden's car. That's the Amanda Holden, Your Honour. Actress and model. Yes, I know it is. It says so here in the char sheet. Quite clearly, Amanda Holden. It's the famous one, of course. There's lots of them. She's the one on TV, Your Honour. Who stop interrupting? I don't care if she's the Queen. Are you implying, Mr Hancock, that I don't dispense my judgments fairly, regardless of race, colour, creed or social class, popularity or sanity? Of course not, Your Honour. Would I think that? I'm sure that if I were the Queen, you'd treat me in the same overbearing, indifferent and out-of-hand way. <laughs> Tosh, Mr Hancock. I may hate you, but my hatred is entirely logical. But returning to the case, how famous are we talking about here? This Amanda Holden, I... Very famous, Your Honour. She's an A-lister. Right. <laughs> Let's proceed. Mr Tweezer, you were found in the boots of a Miss... Amanda Holden's car, a famous person, as I've just found out. So just mind what you're saying about her, I've got my reputation to consider. It wasn't my fault, Your Honour. I didn't enjoy it or anything. It was one of the worst experiences of my life. Have you ever been in the boot of a car? Of course I haven't. So the whole world is conspiring against you, is it, Mr. Tweezer? Including the lovely Amanda Holden, who I believe does a lot of charity work. Wonderful woman, wonderful. I don't know nothing about her. I only saw the back of her head for 200 miles. Mr. Tweezer, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. You think the world is ganging up on you, so you jump in the car boot of the first famous person that comes along, and you try and attract some unwarranted attention to yourself. Now, if you were Miss Holden, would you like someone like yourself to just jump in your car boot? Of course not. But I didn't jump in her boot, did I? It didn't happen. I fell into her boot. 
when the lid was up. It's like a toilet seat. You should keep the lid down, shouldn't you? A man is a girl. I would have thought she'd have known that one. <laughs> Answer the question. Haven't I answered any yet? I'm trying. What question are we talking about? We're talking about the question that I've just asked. You're not a famous person, are you, Mr. Tweezer? And you want to be one. As famous as Miss Holden, don't you? Which is why you jumped in her boot. Well, let me see if I understand the question. I wouldn't mind being famous, but I didn't jump in a boot. Does that make me famous? My God, man, you're still not answering the question. What has Miss Holden done to you, Mr. Tweezer? Has she ever jumped in your boot? I don't think so, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure of anything anymore. No, I couldn't swear to it. I don't always look in my boot. There you are, then. You admit to upsetting dear poor Amanda on purpose for no reason. So that's a custodial sentence for you then. Are you aware, Mr. Tweezer, how upset she is? I didn't mean to upset her, Your Honour, but I can understand how it would be upsetting if what you were saying was true, but it isn't. What do you mean if? If I were telling the truth, are you calling me a liar? Yes, Your Honour. I, I mean, no, Your Honour. Right, let's start again. If you fancied someone like Miss Amanda Holden, would you like to go for a drive with her? Don't answer that one, Mr. Tweezer. He's trying to trap you. I might do for the right woman, like my wife. She's not here, you know. She's gone. Now, what if you liked the lady enough to want to jump in her boot? Or would you? You're leading the witness, Your Honour. Silence, Mr. Hancock. I'm simply trying to get to the bottom of this sorry tale whilst leaving Miss Holden's honour intact. So you admit to liking her, Mr. Tweezer. Did Miss Holden encourage you in any way to get into her car boot? It's the first time. It never happened before. I don't sleep around in car boots, you know. I'm not that sort of fella. <laughs> Oh, Your Honour, of course she didn't, but why did she reverse into me, knocking me backwards into the boot, if she didn't want me to be there? If she didn't encourage you, Mr. Tweezer, then it follows she must have discouraged you, and yet you insist on being in her boot whilst she travelled in fear of her life to Cornwall. But she didn't know I was there, my lord. I was hidden underneath the condoms and the coconut body cream. <laughs> We've changed our mind, Your Honour. Mr. Tweezer will plead guilty and pay the £200 lockdown fine for travelling without a good reason. Can we go now? No, you cannot. We've established Mr. Tweezer likes being locked up. A public toilet here, a sauna or car boot there. So perhaps being locked in a prison cell will be right up his alley. It strikes me you're living in a fantasy land, Mr. Tweezer. So that will be six months in the scrubs where you can indulge your fantasies to your heart's content. Now, Inspector Hancock, don't forget to put a good word in for me with Miss Holden, won't you? Tell her I belong to the same golf club as Stanley Johnson, but I'm younger and better looking. <laughs> Old Mr. Tweezer went to court, tried to escape a lockdown fine, and ended up with a six-month lockdown in Wormwood Scrubs. <laughs> Bill, that's the swings and roundabouts of private policing. Don't mess with Hancock's heroes. <laughs> <laughs>